you know, so what is the ego? Uh, we're discussing it now in terms of the problematic self that we have to deal with. And I would say that that actually was given birth to when humanity ate from the tree that was prohibited, that they were advised not to eat from. As I've come to understand it, I think that that was the birth of the ego as we know it. And a type of self-consciousness or self-awareness, self-identity, right, that created this split between uh, or, or this rift in our relationship, in our connection with our creator. So when all Almighty created Adam and Eve, he placed them in the garden, enjoy, be at peace, be at happy. And it was a place of bliss. But there was a certain level of a lack of awareness or lack of consciousness, I think, because there was no sense of self. I think that at that point, there was a really diminished or lack of sense of self. Like, I think that that marks in our in our existence, in our creation, in our history, a critical point in which we became self-aware as human beings. Before that, it's like being a child, right? A child doesn't really have a sense of self. It just exists. It's happy. It's at peace. As long as its you know, basic needs are met, it's generally in a state of, of contentment and peace and joy. Um, but it's only after, you know, a couple of years that, you know, where, where it begins to sort of develop a more concrete sense of self, like me and you. Before that, it, there's no process. It's not identifying uh, this separation. It just is. It's just one with the ocean of life and reality. And I, I really believe that that's what actually happens, happens and happened to humanity. We developed a sense of self and the sense of separation. And so separation is a huge component of the ego's uh, psychic structure. It's based in separation. It requires separation in order to exist. What the ego is, in many ways, it's a form of artificial, it's like artificial intelligence. So it's no wonder that now we're giving birth to AI, we're really replicating ourselves. The ego, in many ways, is a form of artificial intelligence. It's, it's machinery. It's the brain. Right? It's, it's a natural consequence of the thinking brain that's been infused with spirit. Who we actually are is something far deeper. Something deeper within that's silent, that's still, that's quiet, that's present, that can witness. It's a witness who we truly are. A silent, still, eternal witnessing observer. Interestingly, Allah Almighty describes the believers on the Day of Judgment as witnesses. And why also self-sacrifice, uh, shahada, is referred to as, as witnessing, right? Martyrdom is witnessing. Because it's a witnessing of truth by the sacrifice of the self, the ego. <clears throat> so at that moment, I think that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, stay away from this tree, what happened? Self-awareness arose in humanity. And what the first thing we do, they became aware of their forms, their bodies, that which separates them from everything else. First thing they try to do is cover themselves to cover their forms. So I would say that that's the genesis of the ego, the birth of the ego. But what happens then, right, is, okay, animals have different levels of awareness. But in humans, it reaches awareness, it reaches a level in which it becomes aware of itself, in a sense. Animals don't have like a strong identity. They don't have a strong sense of self. They don't have a story. They don't have a lot of projection into past and future. They're for the most part living in the present moment. The mind at some point now for humans has become capable of, of time-based thinking of past and future, of existing not in the now. You know, an animal, if, it's, if it feels threatened, it will feel stress. But as soon as the stress is gone, as soon as the threat is gone, it's back to normal. It's back to baseline. And it doesn't project this story into the future like, you know, it doesn't go back to the to the hand, to the I don't know to the den or to the nest and say, "Oh my God, you won't believe what just happened to me." You know, this this uh, dog, almost, this cat almost got me, or this dog almost ate me, or this tiger almost, you know, caught me. They don't. They just go back to grazing. They just go back to the normal life. We as humans, though, we we internalize that trauma, and because we're now our minds are time based, we now that becomes part of our past now also a fear for the future so we're continually suffering the results of trauma other animals just heal from trauma immediately for the most part they don't 
They don't project it, you know, because they don't think about it. We ruminate. We think consciously and even unconsciously. So this is why also why Allah Almighty says in the Quran, right, about the awliya. They're, they're free from both fear and from grief, which means they're fear, free from the future and from the past. They're fully present in the here and now. And they've returned to that state of oneness with existence, with reality, with God, by surrendering and relinquishing the self, submitting the self. Right? Because there's two options for us as human beings. To surrender or to resist. These are the two poles of possibility for us as humans. We're either in a state of surrender or in a state of resistance or somewhere on that spectrum. And so... The ego requires resistance. That's how it differentiates itself. That's how it perpetuates its own sense of self as a separate existence, because it has will. This is why our she, she, you put us through very difficult tests to, to train us to not complain. And I, I've got to say, I failed miserably at this one. To train us not to complain. Because any complaint really is a complaint. Is the ego resisting what is? You know, Eckhart Tolle said it, that, that that's the most insane thing a human being can do is to resist reality. It is it, what's happening or what existing or what, what is manifesting is, is there. So how can I reject it? It's like rejecting reality. The first step is surrender. And the last step is surrender. But it's surrender that dissolves the ego. The ego requires resistance in order to exist and to make us suffer, to be honest. The path of freedom from suffering is surrender. The path of freedom from time is surrender. You know, this is, it's a full circle. Like a child it has no ego. And as it's born, the ego begins to develop. And a large part due to, of course, its environmental influence. To the point that the ego starts to create so much suffering that it realizes, like we mentioned Eckhart Tolle, like he did, he said, I can't live with myself any longer. And then becomes the return journey back to selflessness, back to the transcendence of self, back to the dissolution and dissolving of self. And that really is the path to freedom. So at that point, the human being ends up back in the garden, in paradise, but this time aware. A child is not aware. It's existing in a state of peace, but its level of development or awareness or consciousness is, doesn't hasn't experienced anything else, so that's all it knows. We, on this incredible journey, see the opposite of God's grace and beauty and bliss, and it's really manifest in the self, in the ego. And then once we are able to go beyond that, transcend that, leave that behind, then we can truly understand what is possible. I think this is why, right, Allah, one of his names is Anur, the light. But one can't know what light is except through experiencing darkness. One can't know what love is except through experiencing hate. One can't know what peace is except for experiencing suffering. It comes down to faith. It comes down to levity. It comes down to belief. It comes down to trust and reliance. You know, a child doesn't have much responsibility. So its heart is, you know, free. It's more liberated. But then responsibility sets in. And so the prison walls start to set in. But there is a way to get through this. And that is by realizing, by reminding ourselves, by recognizing, by redeveloping faith and trust in the reality that Allah is in control, that Allah is the provider. You know, it's that is the key back to get getting back to that. And that's the most beautiful thing. So, okay, what does Jesus say, for example? Beautiful quote. Suffer not the little children to come unto me. For verily I say unto you, until you become as they are, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Beautiful statement. Beautiful quote. One time I was in the sohbah of one of my sheikhs. But uh, one of the dads was there, and his son was like five years old or something. He just kept twirling around the room, you know? And the sheikh is giving a talk, so everybody's sitting very quietly, good other, respectful, quiet, humble, taking notes, or listening attentively. And there's one kid just spinning in circles in the middle of the room while the sheikh is talking. And his dad keeps telling him, come here, be quiet, calm down. He just keeps trying to get him under control. But the kid is, is in his own universe. And finally, the sheikh says, leave him. And the sheikh said, leave him. He says, when you become like that, then you will have arrived. Then you will reach your, then you will have made it. 